Good afternoon, students that stayed home because it was too cold. Um, we're going to finish the story today. Mm. They can see. They can see this. Okay. I'm just like wait. <laughs> no, they can't see me. They can only see this. What All right. Huh? What about them? No, we're not using them. We use them to establish uh, the first part. The end is just dialogue back and forth, and you get like a wrap-up of the story. All right, um, so we have here um, The Necklace by Guy de Maupassant. We know he's a French uh, writer. He was born into a high-middle-class family. His fortune ended. Uh, we know that he worked as a clerk. Uh, we know that SS on the side. What was that? He wrote short stories on the side. He made a little bit of money, but he didn't become a famous writer until after his death. We know this takes place in Paris, Paris France in the 19th century. Um, and then we know that we have two main characters, she, which is not named until I believe page three or four. Uh, we know a lot about her already. We know that she is self-centered. Uh, she has no expectations for herself. She has settled for less by marrying the little clerk, which is her husband, and she has no destiny. Um, we do have visual imagery, food imagery, where she talks to us about where she lives, and it's horrible, and it's such a poor place to live, and uh, she suffers endlessly, and the food she eats, right, like, it's just, it's all horrible for her, right? She's not grateful. She's very manipulative. Go ahead. Um, in the beginning, it's just, like, she settled for less and everything, yet over here, like, throughout the whole thing, she's like, oh, I want this, and oh, I wish I had this big house and all this food. So, like, does that mean she does have expectations? She had no expectations for her husband. Um, that's interesting. That's an interesting point that you bring because I feel like, and I had, it was Khan who mentioned that she acts the way she acts because of the fact that she is a female. So it's almost like when you're young, you kind of just go through life, but then you grow up and you're like, well, I'm a woman. And I can marry into class. Now I know that. Not only that, but I'm pretty. So I deserve those things. So it's almost, I feel like she wasn't like that at some point. But eventually, she she developed into this person that felt like she needed things that she wasn't even supposed to get. But because she was a girl and she was pretty, she wanted those things. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, it's a good point to bring up. Um, we see here that they are invited to a, a ministry ball and she wants to go but she doesn't have anything to wear and we know that her husband gives her how much money? Uh, 400 francs so that um, she can go to this party um, and we know that she gets her dress but she's not satisfied she's sad and, and miserable because she doesn't have what? Jewelry. Jewelry. Right? So she goes to her friend and she tells her friend, like, you know, do you have something to lend me? Her friend says, yes, choose whatever you want. And she finds this beautiful what? Diamond, Diamond necklace. She puts it over herself. She looks in the mirror. She's really happy. And she's like, vámonos, este me lo pongo. Right? And she takes it. She goes to the ball and she gets everything that she wants. Everybody is looking at her. Everybody envies her. Everybody's after her. Everybody's like, wow, she's so beautiful. Everybody wants to dance with her. All that good stuff. This reminds us of a, another fairy tale. What fairy tale does this remind us of? Cinderella. Cinderella, right? So good connection there. Um, we see here that the text says that she left about four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Guys, this is the 1800s. Is this the time to get home? Mm -hmm. No. We are 2018 and my mother would still tell me this is not the time to get home. My mom wants me home latest at midnight. Right? Or at least two o'clock. Right? But four? ¿Cuáles horas son esas para llegar? Right? What is open at four? Well, the ball was still going on, I'm assuming, right? So it says here, she left at four o'clock in the morning, and since, since midnight, her husband had been dozing off in a deserted little room in company of three other men whose wives were having a good time. He threw over her shoulders the garments he had brought for them to go home in, modest everyday clothing whose poverty clashed with the beauty of the ball dress. 
So the way I envis envision this, John, is that she's the, the party's over and she's leaving, and he comes behind her, and what does he do? He puts over her, right, like a coat, right, because it's cold and you'll see in a minute. But it's not a fur coat, and it's a modest coat. So what do you think her reaction is? Oh, my God. Quítame este mugrero. Quítame esto. Right? I don't want anybody to see me wearing this. So he puts it over her, and I love the way that it says here that the, the garment was modest and the poverty of the garment clashed with a ball dress. What device do we have there? Personification. Personification. It's almost as if the garment, the coat, had instigated something, right? Like the bad guy, the garment, how dare you come out at this time, right, like, stay put away, right, so we have personification, and we're right here on the side, she did not want to be seen in modest clothing, it's almost as if she used the clothing to reveal her true identity, right? And we can see that here in the text. It's that she was conscious of this, and she was anxious to hurry away. Okay? She was anxious. She didn't want anybody to see her. So that she would not be noticed by other women putting on their costly furs. Lucelle restrained her, though. And he said, wait a little. You'll catch a cold in the open. I'm going to fetch a cab. So we can see here that he is very caring. I don't want to say very, but he's caring. He tells her, don't go. You know, you're going to get what? Sick. You'll catch a cold. Be careful. Stay back. Let me go get the cab. But she did not listen to him. And we go back to the fact that this is on Adrian. A, this is a short story written in this time period and you have a woman who is not listening to the orders of her husband now I'll tell you personally that's kind of cool right? but we cannot ignore the fact that if we stick to the gender roles he asked her to do something and she did not listen and rapidly she descended the staircase kind of like who? Cinderella. Cinderella now what happens to Cinderella when she rapidly descends the staircase? She loses her shoes. So, John, what do you think is going to happen to her? Drop the She's going to drop the necklace. I know. Don't that, right? Oh. Let's continue. When they were out in the street, they could not find a cab. They began to look for one, shouting at the drivers whom they saw passing in the distance. Let's turn the page. They walked down towards the sign, which is a river in Paris so they walked to the river area they were desperate and they were shivering so we can infer what Angela? what can we infer? yeah it was cold we can infer that it was cold. And at last they found on the quay one of those old night prowling carriages which were only to be seen in Paris after dark as though they were ashamed of the shabbiness in the daylight. So they found a what? Carriage. Kind of like, like in what? Cinderella. Cinderella. Are you making the connections? Yes. Okay. It brought them to their door in the Rue des Mar Mar Martyrs and sadly they walked up to their own apartment. It was the end for her. Now let me ask you. It was the end. Alondra, what exactly was the end? Of the life that she dreamed of having. Right? The dress and being... The, the life that she dreamt of, yeah. Surrounded by uh, other wealthy women. Thank you. Samantha? What else? What else was the end? 
Okay. Um, illusion, like illusion, right? How do you say that? Maybe like yeah, like her her aspirations, her desires, yeah. right? To be wanted, to be sought after. Ashley, what else ended for her? Just because she lost the necklace, so she's like. No, no, no. She no, doesn't even know she lost it at this point. Um, well, I mean, it's kind of like Cinderella. She went to the ball, and then afterwards, yeah, she was, like, her dress went away after 12, after midnight, so now she's back to her real life. Like, as she's back into, like, reality, she's, mm -hmm. I don't know, something like that. Yeah, so maybe, like, in the end of her fantasy. Yes. Right, because she was back to this moment of reality where she was no longer, you know, the, the princess of the night. Um, Divine, what else? What else can we add to this? And it's not too far off. It's just different ways of saying the same thing. Um, I kind of thought, like, in a bad way, or, like, her relationship with Because, um, she's kind of, like, she liked it a lot, and she wants to go back to it. Oh, I like, I like that. So you... So you're saying it was the end of her relationship with her man, yeah. right? So maybe um, she took it a step further. She said, le gustó, right? So that's it for her, right? Um, I, can, I can see that. I can roll with that. Chaitis? What else ended? Think of how she felt. At that oh moment? Oh, thank you. Like the way she, she loved being, you know, admired. The happiness ended. The admiration ended. Luis, what else? Yeah, everything she had. Okay, so like the physical stuff she had? Or what do you mean? Or like the moment or... Yeah, the moment. So the moment itself ended. That moment of pride. That moment of happiness that moment of admiration of the life that she dreamt of, her little fantasy, it was over. As for him, the paper reads, he was thinking that he, might be, that he must be where? Yeah. At the office at 10. So he's thinking about work. Gracias. Como todo hombre. Work. Okay. She took off the garments in which she had wrapped her shoulders so as to see herself in all of her glory before the mirror. So guys, she took off the coat and she stood in front of the mirror and she wanted to see herself in the dress one last time. Why, John? To like admire herself. To admire herself. To savor, right? The way she looked one last time. One more time. Okay. But suddenly she uttered a cry. <gasps> the necklace was no longer around her neck. And what does the husband say? Read it for us, Tritus. Oh, what's the matter with you? Asked her husband, already half undressed. And she turned towards him in the utmost distress. Read it for us, um, Ashley. I, I, I no longer got Madame Forestier's necklace. And he started with astonishment. Go ahead. What? Impossible. They searched for it in the folds of the dress, in the folds of the coat, in the pockets, everywhere. They could not find it. Go ahead. Are you sure that you still had it on when you came away from the mall? Yes, I took it in the hall at the ministry. But if you had lost it in the street, we should have heard it fall. Yes, probably we should. Did you take the number off the, of the cab? No. You didn't notice it, did you? No. They stared at one another, dumbfounded. At last, let's...